dark chocolate with almonds. Figure I gotta keep my energy up for uh, this week. So I'm in it for the long haul. Tom's Parade, continuing with my special week-long 2019 year-end spectacular-ish. I'll be bringing you a couple of short lists today, and I figure I would get the negativity out of the way early. Not that this list is all that negative, it's just uh, doesn't highlight the positive. Uh, this first list, anyway, of the two lists that I'll be bringing you today. The first list is my most disappointing albums of 2019, and it's an unranked list of five albums that, well, I didn't hate I just was disappointed in. Uh, they just kind of let me down for whatever reason. Uh, mostly it's, it, this is going to be kind of a quick list because most of the reasons uh, for most of these albums being on the list is just because, well, they just didn't live up to my expectations. I don't know if I had my expectations too high or what, but uh, well, let's just go ahead and get on the, with the list, shall we? The first album is Nothing Happens by Wallows. And this one, uh, yeah, I was, for some reason, I was just expecting more out of it and it just ended up disappointing me. I liked it on the first listen, but yeah, after that, it just really, the songs just kind of fell flat. They, they seemed to blend together a little too much. And yeah, I just, I don't know if it was just not my sound uh, for, for what it was. I, I just don't know. But uh, yeah, that one, sad to say, it was, uh, it just ended up, uh, I actually picked up the album, as is the case with pretty much all these on this list. I bought the CDs and was just so disappointed in them that I ended up uh, trading them off at the record stores. So yeah. Sorry, Wallows, uh, maybe next time around I'll uh, like your next album a little bit more. The second album on this list is A Real Good Kid by Mike Posner. Yeah, I really, really enjoyed his previous album, uh, At Night Alone, from, what was it, 2016, and I actually didn't pick it up for a year or almost two years late uh, until after it was released. Really enjoyed it, but and so I was, I, I probably, this is one that I definitely had my expectations uh, really high for his follow-up, and yeah, it just uh, ended up being just not my thing. I think he um, he made this album really personal, which is you know another reason why uh, I, I'm disappointed in myself for not liking it as much as I, I think I should have. But uh, yeah, I just didn't find enough on on it to like that was just you know endearing and and uh, that I connected with. Next up on my disappointments of the year list is No Geography by the Chemical Brothers. Uh, now, I have a friend who's he's actually a late friend. He passed away a couple of years ago who was really, really into the Chemical Brothers. It was his favorite artist. And so I, you know, checked out the singles from this album and I really enjoyed them. And so I was expecting that I would be just totally in love with uh, their album. And for some reason, just the rest of the album just did not seem to live up to the singles. And I don't know what happened, but yeah, it just it just fell apart in my ears, I guess you could say. Uh, so yeah, I, I'm really, you know, Sorry that I didn't like that album more, because, uh, yeah, it was uh, my friend's favorite artist, uh, my, my late friend, so, yeah. Another disappointment for me this year was Miracle Pill by the Goo Goo Dolls. And now I will admit that this one was probably, out of um, all of them on this list, this was the most of an impulse buy. I, I'm not a huge fan of the Goo Goo Dolls, not for any particular reason, I just have never really followed them. Uh, and so I saw, I think I saw a review of this one on a YouTube channel, and I thought, hmm, maybe I should go ahead and check them out. The, 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 song clips sounded good when I listened to them and yeah I just picked up the album and yeah what can I say just they seem very very middle of the road and unmemorable and you know just just unexciting songs for some reason I know they, they connected with some people like actually the uh, review that I saw on YouTube was very very uh, positive and uh, glowing for it but uh, for me yeah it just it just didn't do it for me and finally, my last and actually most recent entry on my disappointing albums of the year list is What's My Name by Ringo Starr. Uh, yeah, I, I've i kind of been wanting to get into Ringo Starr a little bit more, uh, partly because I reviewed a uh, an album of his, an early album of his, Goodnight Vienna, uh, in one of my Backtracks videos as a Spotlight album, and I enjoyed it. And also because uh, a lot of the members of his uh, all-star band that he went on tour with this past year were part of the album. Uh, amongst them, Colin Hay from Men at Work, one of my favorite artists of all time. Uh, so, but and yeah, I picked up. So I picked up the album, listened to it. After the second listen, though, um, a lot of the songs just 
they you know they just fell apart on me they just did not hold up to repeated listens there are a couple of good songs on the album uh and actually one of the best renditions i've ever heard uh, that i've enjoyed the most of the motown song money uh, is on this album he did a good job on that one and a couple other ones there's one called magic that he did a good did a good job on that i really enjoyed but yeah as for the rest of it yeah it just uh, its shelf life unfortunately was was very short and so yeah i, I ended up trading that album in so Sorry to say, Ringo. Um, I, I, it's still not deterring me, though, from uh, trying out some of his previous albums, uh, his previous more recent albums uh, in his discography. So uh, maybe at some point I will get into Ringo Starr, but unfortunately, What's My Name was not the album that did it for me. Okay, now on to my second list of today, and it's one that I did last year kind of on a whim. I just you know decided sort of at the last minute to do it, and I had fun doing it, so I decided, hey, I'm going to bring it to you every year. Why not? Uh, it is my list of my favorite album covers, as in album art, of the year. Uh, and I know last year I did my least favorite album covers also, but I decided eh, there, there really weren't any album covers that struck me as really terrible this past year, so I'm just going to drop that list and just give you my favorite album covers of the year. Honestly, I think uh, album art is something that's uh, become a little bit of a lost art, uh, no pun intended, uh, although now with the resurgence of vinyl and, you know, with album covers being in their full 12, 12 inch by 12 inch uh, formats that they were originally designed for, it's beginning to be appreciated a little bit more, which is something I am really happy to see. And it's actually kind of one of the reasons why I like to buy vinyl is because of that nice big artwork. But anyway, let's run down quickly my list of my five favorite album covers of the year. Coming in at number five is the cover for Pink's Hurts to be Human. I love the color palette, I love the uh, impressionist approach to it and the, the geometric accents and overlays of it. I just really, really enjoyed it. Uh, you know, por portrait album covers are not really my things, you know, just portrait of the artist, but this one was just done so uniquely and excitingly. And actually, uh, Skip's, uh, just as they're going out of business sale was starting, Skip had a, one of those, you know, three foot by three foot uh, versions of that album cover for sale. And uh, I, w I should have bought it, I was going to buy it, but uh, I passed on it saying, hey, I'll get it next time. By the next, by the time I went in there, this, the next time it was gone. Somebody had bought it. So uh, unfortunately, somebody else gets to enjoy the full image of that, even though, yes, I have, I, I've mentioned before, I have four or five of those things already that I don't have the wall space for, but still, I wanted to buy it. And that tells you how much I enjoyed that album cover. Now, my fourth favorite album cover of the year is for Sturgill Simpson's Sound and Fury. Now, this one w would not ordinarily be on my list because I don't like uh, you know, the darker album covers or uh, the limited color palette. And I'm and I'm also not into the dystopian or apocalyptic imagery. You know, it's got that mushroom cloud in the background. And I'm also not into cars or hot rods. And of course, the, the centerpiece uh, item in the picture is, a, uh, is of a hot rod, the front grill of a hot rod. But the fact that, uh, well, first of all, just the way that the art was done, it's just, it, it, it's, it's a painting and it was just, for some reason, the way it was done was cool, and also the fact that the car grill was made into a radio dial. I mean, that that's just for some for some reason it just clicked with me. I, I just really really enjoyed it, and it's one of the things that caught my eye. And I, I'm kind of glad that uh, it did that because I might not have uh, I might have passed up on the album if the uh, album art hadn't intrigued me that much. So yeah, next up on my list of favorite album covers of the year is for Western Stars by Bruce Springsteen. It's just a gorgeous picture. What can I say? Uh, I, I'm, I'm again. I'm not necessarily a fan of Western films or Western imagery, but I do like pictures of nature. And you know, who, who doesn't like pictures of blue skies with puffy white clouds in them, and gorgeous landscapes? And I also I think that horses are some of the most beautiful animals on the face of the earth. So just I mean, just the composition of that picture was just absolutely gorgeous. Uh, kind of goes along with the album, which you will see in my, uh, spoiler alert, in my list of favorite albums of the year. So yeah, that was just an absolutely gorgeous album cover. It went perfectly with the album. And now my runner-up for favorite album cover of the year is Keb Moe's Oklahoma. Now the reason I love this one is uh, just for all the little pictures, the little images that are scattered around the cover, and I don't know if it's a uh, you know, photograph of actual embroidery work or if it's just, you know, done you know, art artistically recreated to make it look like actual hand embroidery. But it's just, it's just so much fun to look at. I mean, I could sit there and look at that cover for 20 minutes at a time. I mean, you, you see, you know, the states of Tennessee and California, the, the, the shapes of those, although ironically, Oklahoma is not one of the states that's uh, embroidered on the cover. 
And then you've got stuff like the Statue of Liberty and the Eiffel Tower, you know, kind of, you know, bringing to mind, you know, images of, uh, you know, different countries around the world, as well as, uh, you know, things like the Big Dipper, and of course, uh, two or three guitars, maybe even more than three guitars on there, and then, you know, some uh, self-referential things like uh, a little picture of a little Grammy Award and a cassette tape on there, and also, and also such mundane things like uh, bacon and eggs and M&Ms. I mean, you could literally, you could just sit there and look at that cover for hours, maybe not hours, but you know, for a long, long time, and just keep seeing new things on it. And it's just one of the most uh, whimsical and fun and eye-catching album covers of the year, in my opinion. And now here it is, my number one favorite album cover of 2019. It is for the script's latest album, Sunsets and Full Moons. I mean, just look at it. Isn't it absolutely gorgeous? It it made me want to buy the album before I even heard a single song off of it, uh, which, which in a way, I guess, is kind of what album covers are supposed to do, at least back they were back in the old days, supposed to compel you to buy the album, right? Uh, and I get the same feeling looking at the script's album covers uh, that I do when I look at Imagine Dragons album covers. I mean, it's just, you know, the albums can be hit or miss, uh, but the covers just absolutely blow you away. They just they just pull out all the stops for the album covers. I mean, some of the most gorgeous album covers ever, and almost all of the script's albums have been like that, in my opinion. So yeah, just fantastic, absolutely gorgeous, spectacular album cover. Uh, my winner for 2019. And well, there you have it for today's installment of my 2019 year-end spectacular-ish. I hope you had fun with these quick little lists I did for you today, and there's more lists to come. And that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, suggestions, questions, constructive criticisms, lay them on me in the comments section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the link to my Twitter feed and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos, and be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.